of external affairs spokesperson arindam bakshi has said that we have issued an advisory to take precautions our consulate is working there we have said that if they face any problem they can contact our consulate yes uh, i also read that advisory it says a little more it says that you should be careful when you go to places where there is likelihood of violence and all that now we know that uh, our consulate is a likely target so how can they go to the consulate second there are 230000 students indian students in canada the largest abroad so my view is that of course they had to be advised to take care but uh, this sort of uh, advice might cause confusion for some of the young minds and it has been reported that some of them are confused uh, a while briefing he also said that safe heaven uh, is being provided to do so and take action against those who have uh, terrorism charges or send them here to face justice we have sought either extradition request or assistance related to that at least more than 20 25 individuals uh, we have requested over the years but the response has not been helpful at all well let us analyze it you see there are if there are terrorists then between canada and india there is a treaty to cooperate in such matters there is also an extradition treaty so those treaties should be followed in the case of terrorists only thing is that you know just because you call somebody terrorist it doesn't follow i agree always with you but as i said as a matter of principle terrorists should be dealt with under the law but but there is a caveat India has also taken the line that those who preach separatism that is those who want a independent Khalistan uh, should be dealt with by by Canada now this i am afraid having been having served in Canada from 1982 to 1985 during which time we had the blue star operation and the assassination of prime minister indira gandhi i can tell you that uh, that demand from india does not make sense because in canada officially a referendum was held to decide whether quebec should remain with canada or not so not only that these referenda these are private referenda with no impact because khalistan project has no support in the punjab it's only when india attaches importance to what they do they get publicity so just ignore them uh, when asked on increasing security uh, spokesperson arindam bakshi said that we have always believed that it is the post gov uh, post government's responsibility to provide security some places we have our own security for, uh, for posture also but i don't want to discuss security measures in public that's not an appropriate situation so it's absolutely correct it is under the vienna convention it is the responsibility of the host government to provide security now let me tell you i was actually attacked in 1983 i was attacked by khalistanis when i was calling on the premier of uh, the province of winnipeg well rcmp was with me in fact i was traveling in their car but uh, they managed to attack me throw eggs on to my face and also hit me here what did we do we summoned the canadian high commissioner and uh, a few days later i got a personal letter of apology and regret from the canadian prime minister there the matter ended uh he for look at any specific information that is provided to us but so far we have received no specific information from canada from our side specific evidence about criminal activities by individuals based on canadian soil has been shared with canada but not acted upon well there are two parts to it 
The last part, I agree that it's correct that Canada could have acted more promptly and more comprehensively on information provided by us. But as regards the first part, I think we should understand that is, Prime Minister uh, Trudeau told our Prime Minister that there is this matter and there is some evidence which indicates that an Indian agent was involved behind it. And let us, uh, we want India's cooperation investigating the matter further. And India rejected it and India said there is no question of India's cooperation. Now let's see what has happened. United States has publicly said India should cooperate. And Australia has publicly said they have taken up the matter with Indian officials. So I'm afraid it should have been better if we had told Canada, okay, you want us to cooperate? Give us evidence. And after examining the evidence, with greater force we could have said, look, we had no involvement at all. Uh, when, uh, on visa, you were not aware of the security threats being faced by our High Commission and consulates in Canada. This has disrupted their normal functioning. Accordingly, our High Commission and consulates are temporarily unable to process visa applications. We will be reviewing the situation on a regular basis. Well, let me put it this way. I mean, if uh, the government has uh, taken the position that it, you know, it's become difficult to operate, well, we have to accept that. But we also have IT. So it is not necessary for the Canadian to appear in person. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it is possible to conduct IT operations. There is no insecurity there. And one more important point. 80,000 came from Canada as tourists, I think, two years before. So, you know, I cannot uh, take action against you in such matters without hurting myself. He further said that uh, we have increased strength in our mutual diplomatic presence. Their number is very much higher than ours in Canada. I assume there will be a reduction from the Canadian side. Well, it is a convention that there should be a parity, but it's not always enforced. Mm -hmm. But if you insist on it, naturally Canada will have to comply. When there was a question on, on report, uh, Bhakti said that we take our obligations very seriously. We will be certainly providing all security to foreign diplomats from India. We also expect Canadian authorities to show similar sensitivity to our diplomats in Canada. Yeah, it's an absolutely correct statement. Uh, and uh, further he said, uh, the issue is those who have valid visas, OCIs, are free to travel to India. The issue is the incitement of violence, inaction by Canadian authorities, and the creation of an environment that disrupts the functioning of our consulates, which is what is making us stop temporarily the issuance of visa services. We will review the situation on a regular basis. Yes, but to here I want to make a point. Let's understand why what has happened has happened. The Prime Minister Trudeau does not have a proper majority. He is dependent on the support of NPD, new, um, NDP, New Democratic Party, headed by Jagmeet Singh who is a staunch Khalistani. So, when there was this, uh, what shall I say, apparent evidence linking an Indian official, Prime Minister Trudeau had the option to tell India, look, this is what we find. Why don't you just quietly transfer that officer while we will take action against the perpetrators here? Now, that would have been one way of de-escalating it. He didn't do it. I personally guess, I don't know, that he didn't do it because he was under pressure from Jack Meet Singh. Uh, raised by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Prime, our Prime Minister rejected them. Because. Yeah, I have already answered that, saying that it would have been better if India had said, let's show the evidence. Hmm. And after examining the evidence, we could have told Look, we have seen the evidence given to us, examined them, and there is no merit in that. Uh, one more question, sir. Uh, uh, reputational issues and reputational damage. If there is any country that needs to look at this, I think it is Canada. 
and its growing reputation as a place as a safe haven for terrorists for extremists and for organized crime and i think that's a country that needs to worry about its international reputation or that i would say is that it's not in the interest of canada it's not in the interest of india to escalate this matter and for the countries to talk to each other through the media it is important that they talk to each other and here i want to make one more point if you want a resolution then india and canada should quietly appoint a special representative they should meet at a neutral place without the media glare and work out a formula to be referred to their respective governments now if india and canada are not able to do it in friendly nudge from president biden can help last question but but without his going to the media first last question sir there is a degree of prejudice here they uh, they may have uh, made allegations and taken action on them to us it seems that these allegations by government of canada are primarily primarily politically driven well i have already explained to what extent uh, prime minister trudeau is dependent on a certain party for remaining in office thank you thank you thank you so much